Today, we will be talking about one of our greatest presidents, Abe Lincoln. Russell Freeman has written a wonderful autobiography about the past president, and we would like to share Abe's assassination story with you. First, we would like to discuss what happened before the assassination. Lincoln was well aware that people would try to assassinate him, or at least think about it. He had necessary security, but he knew that no amount of security would ever completely prevent an assassination attempt. He dealt with the threats of assassination by filing them away in an envelope marked assassination. One day in April, only a couple of weeks before he was killed, Lincoln had a nightmare that consisted of him finding his dead corpse in the East Room of the White House after an assassin had killed him. The creepy and spine-chilling part of this is that he would soon be killed by an assassin only a few weeks after his dream. Stated in Friedman's autobiography about the day of Abe's death, Lincoln arose early as usual so he could work at his desk before breakfast. He was looking forward to the day's schedule. The afternoon, he would tell his wife, I never felt so happy in my life. Later in the day, Lincoln had a meeting with his cabinet where he discussed persecutions that were scheduled to take place. Russell stated in his story, Lincoln emphasized again that he wanted no persecutions, no bloody work. Enough blood had been shed. There are men in Congress, he said, who possess feelings of hate and vindictiveness in which I do not sympathize and cannot participate. This shows that Lincoln was truly a kind man with a big heart. After finishing other work in his office, including pardoning a Confederate spy from death, Abe and his wife went on a nice carriage ride on the beautiful Good Friday. That evening, they planned to go to the play Our American Cousins at Ford's Theater with some of their close friends. After Lincoln's and his wife's son, Willie, died, they had been depressed and sad. As stated in the story, since Willie's death, Mary had been plagued by depression and imaginary fears, and at times, Lincoln had feared for his wife's sanity. The couple made plans to hopefully become more cheerful in the future as they were riding through the countryside. Unfortunately, they would never be able to do so. After having dinner with their friends, Henry R. Rathbone and his fiancée Clara Harris departed off to the play. The group arrived late and were led up to the president's box overlooking the stage. As soon as the president's group was all there, the orchestra sang, Hail to the Chief. The audience all stood up and clapped as Lincoln smiled and bowed. Lincoln took his seat in a rocking chair and put on his gold rim eyeglasses that he mended himself. Saying this, the author makes it seem like Lincoln was an ordinary man, which we, as readers, can more easily relate to. According to the story, the play was Our American Cousin, a popular comedy starring Laura Keene, who had already given a thousand performances in the leading role. Lincoln was thoroughly enjoying the play, but little did he know that the door to the president's box wasn't locked, and his bodyguard left his post to watch the play downstairs. The audience had just burst into laughter as the door of the president's box swung open. A shadowy figure came through the door, reached out his arm, and shot his pistol right at the back of Lincoln's head. According to the story, Lincoln's arm jerked up. He slumped forward in his chair, and Mary reached out to catch him. Then she screamed. Major Rathbone looked up to see the man standing with a smoking pistol in one hand and a hunting knife in the other. Rathbone lunged at the gunman, who yelled something and slashed Rathbone's arm to the bone. The assailant then leaped from the box to the stage, which was a high jump, which broke the man's left leg. The man shouted something to the audience, who had recognized him as John Wilkes Booth, a well-known actor. The audience was in shock. Everyone was confused if the shooting was a part of the play or not. Apparently, Booth escaped from the theater onto an awaiting horse, but John was then shot and killed by federal troops in a barn 12 days later. Laura Keene, the actor, suddenly shouted out, The president is shot! The president is shot! Which caused chaos in the theater. In the presidential box, doctors started to examine Lincoln while Mary was sobbing. Lincoln lost consciousness immediately, and the doctors found that the bullet had gone through Lincoln's head and was lodged behind his right eye. According to the story, finally, six soldiers carried the president out of the theater and across the fog-shrouded street to a boarding house, where a man with a lighted candle stood beckoning. As Lincoln laid unconscious in the boarding house, congressmen, government officials, and family members crowded around the dying president. News had come in that another assassin tried to kill the Secretary of State, which caused suspicion that the attack was a part of a rebel conspiracy to murder many government officials and capture the city. At dawn, it started to rain, and people had wrapped their heads around the idea that Abe would pass away. At 7.22 a.m. on April 15th, 
President Abraham Lincoln died at the age of 56. According to the story, a doctor folded the president's hands across his chest, gently smoothed Lincoln's contracted face muscles, closed his eyelids, and drew a white sheet over his head. It was then that the Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton, murmured, Now he belongs to the ages. We can conclude that this quote means that Abe Lincoln is now in the past. He is no longer the president. Four days later, the funeral was held in the East Room of the White House, which, strangely enough, was the room of the funeral in Lincoln's dream. A detachment of black troops carried Lincoln to the Capitol building, along with the sad beat of drums and church bells. Thousands of people waited in the rain to pay their respects to the wonderful president. April 21st, a funeral train set out to Springfield, Illinois. The route of the train followed the route that Lincoln took from his hometown of Springfield to Washington as president-elect. People stopped in major cities to mourn the president, and at 9 a.m. on May 3rd, the train reached Springfield. The story states tens of thousands of people jammed the streets around the station and stood on nearby rooftops. A military band began to play a funeral dirge. All the bells of Springfield tolled, guns fired a salute, and the crowd fell silent as the train came to a stop. After years of waiting to open the objects that Lincoln carried with him the night he died, the Library of Congress finally opened the box. Inside the box was a pair of spectacles, an eyeglass cleaner, a handkerchief, a pocket knife, a wallet, and newspaper clippings. These things are all very ordinary and simple. Although Lincoln was one of the United States' most respected and best presidents, he was just an ordinary man who never deserved to be assassinated. Lincoln wasn't just an ordinary man, though. He was also an amazing president. When our country fell apart, the Civil War, slavery, President Abe Lincoln brought us back together. He once again united this country, and he also abolished slavery. According to one of our newspaper clippings that was found in Lincoln's pocket, are heartedly belonging for re-election of Mr. Lincoln. They think they have observed in his career a grand simplicity of purpose and patriotism, which knows no change and does not falter. These actions made him honorable and a true inspiration for all of us. Although Lincoln died on that fateful night, he will forever be remembered as one of our greatest presidents.